the funniest people are depressed. <laughs> yeah. Like, where the fuck do you think they got to be so funny? F- it's true. <laughs> They're trying to make themselves laugh. It's not about you. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Queer Talk, the number one podcast to connect you to all of your favorite queer creators in a space where we share our stories on all things queer related. And hey, if you're new listening to this, hit that subscribe button on Apple Podcasts and give us a follow on Spotify. Today's guest we have on is a TikToker. She is a night nurse at night. Um, <laughs> And honestly, she's probably one of the funniest people that I've had, like, that I've had on this. I've had a lot of funny people on here. I think she's one of the funniest. Oh. You can find her on TikTok at Quishy C on TikTok. Nice. Um, please welcome Kelsey Costa. Hi. Hello. Yay. Welcome. We're not, uh, we're on, not doing it at night, though. <laughs> That's true. That's true. But it's okay. I'm glad that you could come on. Your skits are fucking hilarious. I wanted to ask, like, have you had any, like, comedic training at all? Because, like, your shit, it's, it's like, very skit-like. Oh, thank you. Um, I, I have, I've taken two levels of uh, improv comedy classes, and that's it. Uh, and everything else comes from uh, just watching SNL over the years. Okay. <laughs> that's awesome. That's so awesome. Yeah, I feel like I saw like a, a TikTok that you posted and I didn't know if it was like real or just like a, you know, just a made up thing for the joke, but that you had gotten rejected from like a comedy troupe in university. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. oh, damn, they fucking missed out. Look at you now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got rejected by them three years in a row in the fourth year. I just didn't bother. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, I'm tired of this. Have you seen Pitch Perfect? I have. I think in movie quotes, and that made me think of Baloney Barb, where you're like, the laughing stock of acapella. (laughs) Like, we can't even get Baloney Barb. (laughs) We can't get anyone. No. Yeah, that's me. (laughs) You're like, yeah, that's me. I'm Baloney Barb. Hello, hi. I'm Baloney Barb. Hi, it's nice to meet you. (laughs) That's fucking crazy. Well, now you're here. You're making skits on TikTok. Like, it's fucking hilarious. And I think it's fun because, like, I mean, yeah, like, the TikTok trends are fun, and, like, I mainly do those because I like to do the voiceovers and stuff like that, but you, like, have mm-hmm. original content that I don't see anywhere else. Even, like, the topics and stuff like that, I feel oh. like, I don't know, like, some people, like, do, like, the same kind of, like, I don't know if I call it trite, but, like, you know, the same, like, ha, 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 lesbians go lows, or, like, you know, that kind of shit. Yeah, like, low-hanging be- fruit. Yeah, it's low-hanging fruit. There's a lot of low-hanging fruit, so. Mm-hmm. So stuff like Thank that. you. Yeah. Cool. I mean, it does, it does all center around the same topics of mental illness and homosexuality, but that's, that's yeah, about it. It differs within. Oh yeah. It differs within each person, but I feel like it's broad enough to where you can do a lot of unique things with it. You know what I mean? Thank like, you. Yeah. Fucked up shit you can talk about. <laughs> yeah. So you're, are you a big SNL fan? I am. Do you watch it still like every Saturday, like when it comes out on Hulu or is, like, are, I, you, are you like the past stuff? So I used to do that. I I used to be like religious about watching it every single Saturday. Uh, but in the past, I'd say year, I've got I've kind of fallen off of that wagon. And I think it's because I'm so obsessed with Kate McKinn that it gets me yeah. overwhelmed to the point where I'm anxious and can't watch it. <laughs> I don't know if that's normal for anybody else. <laughs> no, I understand that. I understand yeah. that. It's 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 rough. I sometimes I can't watch the remake of Ghostbusters. Oh my movie. god! Yeah. I've watched that movie eight times. Well, it seems it's like you've favorite. gotten over your you know, gotten over your fear for that. But for me, I'm just like, yeah, yeah. Oh, that she's a little too hot in that one. I can't do it. I know. Can't yeah. Well, that, I expect I expect it, so I'm ready. I'm prepared. But with with SNL, you never know what she's gonna do. Yeah. Okay. Now I see it. You're just yeah. <laughs> you're like I can do it in a controlled setting when I've seen yep. this movie eight times and I know exactly exactly what's presented of me when but, like, she will be the hottest. Yeah. Have you seen comedians in car or cars with comedians getting coffee and whatever? getting coffee? Yeah. I've seen the Kate McKinnon episode of it. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, that's what I was talking about. Um, I haven't. I don't know if I've seen all of them. I've seen a lot because I love. Like, I grew up in a family who like worships like stand up comedians and SNL uh-huh. and and all of that, which is funny because no one has done stand up besides like one family member. But they're all obsessed. Oh, with you know. it. <laughs> yeah, it's super weird. But yeah, I don't know. I don't watch it every week anymore. Um, but like, I'll Google YouTube or I'll Google on YouTube like all of mm-hmm. the Kate McKinnon skits so that I can see. All oh my the god, yeah. Of them. Mm-mm-mm. So do you like, good. Do you like her impersonations, or do you like just the random skits, like the alien abduction one? Like, okay, what's your favorite? First off, 
Okay, my favorite is Close Encounter with Miss Rafferty. I yes. actually, uh, I actually remade that on Halloween in 2016. No shit. Um, yeah, so that was a really good time. That yeah, that's definitely my favorite. Yeah, Close Encounter is funny. Um, they did a sequel, but I think it's more funny when like um, they break character and they can't yes. keep composure. Like that makes it even funnier, which is supposed. Because you think can it breaks relate comedy to them. Rules. Yeah, I think it breaks it comedy rules though, because you're not supposed to. Because it's supposed to like fuck up the joke if you laugh at your own joke. Right. You know, but, but like but no, and this it breaks a professional boundary that makes it easier to laugh at them. Yeah. Because we're we're all related to that. We all relate. Like when you're trying to keep your keep your shit together and you can't. Yeah. No. I think that's why yep. it's funny. Because like when people yeah. are trying to keep their shit together, it's something that's so funny, but they can't because like they're in a professional setting or like the yeah. whatever doesn't allow mm-hmm. for it. That's why it's funny. Yeah. And then everybody else is like, yeah, this this is that funny. And then they start laughing harder. And it works. <laughs> yeah. I think that was probably my favorite one too. I did like the the one, the Lesbos Island. I thought that was really funny. Oh my God. Yeah. That was good. Oh, my gosh. Uh-huh. I think it's funny because she's like – because they get there and everyone is literally so gay but not gay. I think that's, that's the worst right. part. You're like, all of my signs are telling me – and it's already hard enough for queer women to, to notice and get and be like, oh, right, yeah. our other queer women, wah, wah, you know? And <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when they hit all of the bars, everything, and you're like, okay, this is a surefire – this is a surefire win, you know? And then you're just like, are you serious? Like, you're just like that. Like, you're just like that? Yeah. Like, oh. Yeah. It's a good That's wonderful. It really like, is. that in itself, I feel like it's homophobic. Yes. Like, it's just I, I want to fight that. Like, can you just Agreed. be a little more, like, cis and hetero for me? Can you, you yes. know what I mean? Like, you're just really Teens. fucking with us. Yeah. Pick a team. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you don't have to take a team. <laughs> That's true. Pick a team. If you, want, if you want to, you can. <laughs> you can come between the two. I mean, you don't have to pick pick being straight you can, you can come yeah. around uh you can come around it's fine no but yeah that's funny i still can't believe that she's on it she's been on it for so long i feel like she has such fame and i know it, i don't know how i feel like it's kind of like oh shit what's her face from bridesmaids kristen wig yes kristen wig i feel like she stayed on it for a while too even when she was yeah. getting famous and i'm kind of like yeah. wondering why because i feel like and i hate that this is happening with snl but, like, because there are so many other mediums, you know, I feel like starting yeah, with yeah. Instagram, Facebook, and then when Vine really took off and there's a lot of Vine comedy stars um, yeah. and YouTube, like, you have so many other mediums, you know, and then they can shoot straight into TV with Netflix specials that, like, SNL is becoming less and less relevant because of yeah, that. Yeah, I've noticed that. And I, I feel like a lot of people in the, I guess, in the past couple of years have just got, have gotten tired of a lot of SNL stuff, I guess. So that kind of... I guess adds to that. Which I fucking hate because I like grew up watching those skits and I don't know. I guess yeah. like I will agree. I feel like the days, the the SNL days are behind us, you know? Like yeah. there are so many good little groups and you know, the women of SNL when you had Molly Shannon and Iconic. I mean, yeah. Like iconic fucking women. Like um I, I don't know them all by name, but I could just tell you every single thing they've been in. <laughs> yeah. And quote them and like every single thing. I'm really bad with names, but like they had right. a Women of SNL special where they had, like, all the best fucking people on, like, Tina Fey, oh, Amy Poehler, Molly Shannon. That's um, so good. Random ones that I can't remember, the chick that does Debbie Downer. Like, that was the fucking shit. Like, those were, that was it. And I feel like it sucks because, like, you'll see people that are on shows, like, here and there. And, like, yeah, but it just, like, isn't the same. And I hate that. I yeah. hate that for SNL. Like, I wish, like, I feel like they're, like, oh, the Toys R Us of, to- like, or the Borders books. Like, I just know oh they're going to go God. out of business. Borders. <laughs> oh my god i'm so sad now <laughs> i know borders. i hate comparing them to borders but like i feel like they need to do something or else they're gonna become irrelevant like <laughs> like toys r us was like ah you know i'm getting into like business yeah. here. they're like mm, we don't need to put toys online people are gonna come into stores to get toys and then amazon's nah. like <laughs> <laughs> jeff bezos. oh my god you fucking hate jeff bezos i'm sorry we hate <laughs> jeff bezos oh my god eat the rich I feel like he's deeply unhappy, though, which kind of makes me happy. Yeah, probably. It's like you have that much money. You could use it for something else. First of all, I don't understand how you need that much. Like, I get, like, having goals. No, you Like, don't. I have goals about, like, how much money I want to make. Is it, like, my end-all, be-all? Like, no. Is it, like, something that yeah. I would like to hit? Sure. But when you have that much money, I just don't fucking understand why you need it. Like, right. it has to be ego. It has to be something negative-driven. Like, I just don't understand it. 
And I get I like know. building the business, like Jeff Bezos in the nineties was probably a different Jeff Bezos, like mm -hmm. humble, you know, like wanted to be just like a, a, a real go getter, had hair, yeah. you know? Yeah. And then now he's uh. just like a piece of shit. I don't know. His wife, is, <laughs> his ex-wife, I think is just like have leaving it up. Like I kind of wish that I was his ex-wife, you know, oh I just God. like get out, get all that money and hope she I'll turns marry gay. Jeff Maybe Bezos we'll just to divorce him. Do it. That'll be, that'll Whoa. be, <laughs> write I'll a book about him. it. Oh my God. I literally was idea. seduced by him. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't like read up on him, but like I used to like be in an entrepreneur space and I was real like, oh, I'm going to make a business and I'm going to get it and Gary V and like, I'm going to like watch all this stuff, motivation, like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> brick by brick. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> kind of shit. And I came across an interview where they were just talking about how they knew a lot of powerful people that are like really unhappy. And I think the whole thing about like having money and, and capitalism and all of that, like 1% is like, it buys you pleasure, but it doesn't buy you happiness. Like the happiest True. people are normally not the richest people. They don't even have to be like rich at all. They might be like the poorest. Like there's so many documentaries on, on actual happiness, not like yeah. finding it, finding happiness. Right. It's a dream. <laughs> <laughs> the journey to happiness. The journey to happiness. It's not about the destination. It's the journey. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so it kind of makes me feel better. I don't know if it'll make you feel better about Jeff Bezos, but I feel like he's deeply unhappy and he, you can buy all the cocaine, yeah. and all the fucking strippers. You know what I mean? But yeah, it's not I make love you that. Happy. It's not going to make you happy. He's a shell of a man. He looks like a turtle kind of. Oh my God, he does. Like he and Mitch McConnell are like cousins or something. Oh, Mitch McConnell has been compared to a slug. I think. Oh, that snail. works too. Slug I've always snail. heard turtle, yeah. but yeah, that works. Basically anything that moves slowly close to the ground. <laughs> a crustacean. Yeah. A, bo a bottom dweller. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh man. Another thing, talking about politics, you live, you live in South Carolina, right? I do. I do. I do. South Carolina went red. Yes. What is it like being queer and being in South Carolina? I feel like the only thing I know about South Carolina is Myrtle Beach. I've been there like a million times. Everyone in the Midwest loves I lo to go to yeah. South Carolina. Everyone loves Myrtle Beach. Dirty yeah. Myrtle. <laughs> um, well, I have two different experiences being queer in the South because I live in Charleston, which is, I would say, a, a more, I guess, blue part of South Carolina, if you will, more progressive part of South Carolina. And I, but I went to college in Clemson, which is in the upstate. Where every where it's a, I feel like it's a Clampson. lot more conservative. Clampson, yeah, everybody Clampson. thinks there's a P in it. But um, my I guess my experience in Charleston hasn't been it hasn't been bad. Like I've gone to you know pride parades and had a good time, and I've never really faced any kind of hardship with that. I guess um, in Clemson it was a little bit different. It was a lot of people. I I wrote for a satire article website uh, where it was it was called the Black Sheep, and I wrote for that. And I wrote about pride in one of my articles and it got posted on Facebook and just the amount of homophobic comments from like Clemson fans was awful. Oh, Jesus. But yeah, my experience in Charleston hasn't been bad. It's been, it's been decent. Yeah, that's good. I mean, most cities like even in the South, like do pretty well, you know, like I yeah. was really surprised by Texas. I mean, they are big, but like Austin yeah. is great. Dallas is great. Houston's great. I think Austin's like yeah. all the gays live in Austin. <laughs> um, I haven't like spent a lot of time. I've only spent time in Dallas, but I've never yeah, been that's to awesome. Texas. That's I awesome. Go. Yeah. How is the queer culture? Like, are there gay bars? Like what's, what's it kind of like? <laughs> like pre COVID, I guess. Pre COVID. Okay. So there's a, we have like, we have like one main gay bar, which is, which I, I went to several times. It's really small, but it's cute and it's fun. And then we have like the bars that they do like drag shows and stuff at, fun. um, which aren't, I guess, necessarily gay bars, but like they have they're drag pretty queens, much and gay it's bars. <laughs> pretty much gay bars. <laughs> yeah, they're not gay, um, but they're gay. You know? Yeah, yeah. There's there's the energy. Yeah, but as far as I know, there's not a whole lot of of bars and stuff exclusively for gay people. Yeah. Uh, but the ones that we have are fun. <laughs> And the ones that I know of, at least, I don't, I'm not, I don't go out that much. No, I get that. I mean, <laughs> in, in these times, yeah, like, I don't, I don't oh, get that for that sure. much either. Like, I'll talk, I'll talk about, like, the different bars that I like in Cincinnati. So Cincinnati isn't, like, does it, it has, like, a pretty decent gay community. I feel like it's really, like, really close-knit. But, like, we don't have a lot of places either. 
Like yeah. we have like just a couple and then we have like, I mean, I consider like the cabarets to be the gay bars, you know, like right. I, we don't have like ones that don't do it um, yeah. and stuff like that. But that's pretty crazy. And uh, something I just figured out about Ohio, which is weird because obviously like it went uh, red, but like we have like more and someone said this on TikTok and I like had to like fact check it that they said that we had more gay people in Ohio than really? in like New York or LA, which doesn't make sense to me because per capita, That's like logically, like it doesn't make any yeah. sense. But oh wow, I know it's I don't know who did it, but I was like, that's so fucking weird because Columbus is like very very gay. Like I'm there's gonna move to Ohio. There's a lot of gay shit. There's a lot of gay shit going on in Columbus. I love that. So, I'm going to Columbus. Go to fucking Columbus. I'm gonna go. I'm to going Columbus. to Columbus this weekend. Oh my god, that's I fun. know. <laughs> it's great. But yeah, okay, so that's cool. So Charleston. Charleston's where to go. Yeah, um, I, always I some, guess. I don't always ask people that when I have people on, but I know like listeners are from all over, so it is nice to mm-hmm. kind of get a comprehensive overview of nice, yeah. queer spaces. Yeah, I guess, I mean, what I would say is Charleston is, I would say, more queer friendly, but at the same time, I think I'm also privileged in the fact that I, I'm not one of those people that people like point out as gay, I guess. Yeah. Like I can pass it, you know, you know how a lot of people are uh, called out more based on appearance and everything. And I have a very just straight girl appearance. Yeah. Like you, 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 you're straight passing. And I feel like I've, I, a lot of the time I'm straight passing, even when I think that I'm not like, even when I'm wearing, yeah. I feel, I feel like the gayest shit ever. Like, oh my God, right. there, this was recently. And I haven't even talked about this on the podcast, but I had to call AAA because I had a flat tire. And I like went through the <laughs> air. The tire was completely flat. I like barely made it home, and I was I was kind of pissed because I was like, "Fuck! I just got new tires, and now how old I have like something because of construction that was going on." And I called yeah. AAA. Um, I mean, funny story. It was just flat. It like wasn't actually like fucked up or anything. They just put air in it. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, oh, great! <laughs> <laughs> it was it was really dumb. Thanks but, for your help. They took the tire off. The guy took the tire off. And I went to the auto place and they checked it and they're like, nothing's wrong with the tire. We just refilled it. And then we like did your oil. So it was $20. And I was like, but yeah, that sounds about right. Okay. Yeah. There we go. I don't know anything about cars, but the AAA either. guy literally came and I had just filmed like a couple TikToks and I was like feeling cute. It was like a Saturday. I was like, I can go thrifting. And I was like, oh, I'm going to like look cute. You know, like I'm the main character yeah. today. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh and I come out and I am wearing something I don't know kind of like this and I'm thinking I'm looking pretty gay and he um was like and he wasn't like like hating on me he was just like oh man like you must have a lot of guys knocking at your door like Aww. shit and I was like mm. <laughs> uh, and he's like yep. oh like, you got a boyfriend and I was like no I don't and uh he goes oh my god why not and I was like because oh I'm my lesbian. god I was like, because I'm a lesbian. Um, and he was like, he was like, oh, no shit. <laughs> He's like, oh, now I can see it. He was like, oh, no shit. He's like, I would have never, co- I could have never, oh like, I would have never seen it. And I was like, <clears throat> right over. Ooh, okay. Um, and he tried to backtrack. And he goes, oh, I'm so sorry if I offended you. I was like, it's not offensive. I was like, he's like, I'm not hitting on you. He's like, I got a daughter. She's like 18. And I was like, okay. Okay. Um, just fix cool. my fucking tire, bro. <laughs> just fix my tire, please. <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't even need to oh be Oh my fixed. god. The whole interaction, <laughs> I never needed it. Nope. Um, it maybe 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 you learned something from it. Who knows? So honestly, like yeah. So like cis had people like uh, astonish me in that sense cuz I'm like Yes. Like look at me. They're so bold. It's a polo collared shirt. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm not just like How dare a, you? I I don't know, maybe they're like it's 90s sin. I don't know. Yeah. Um <laughs> it's funny. But uh yeah. Yeah, I think that you have privileges. There's like a whole list of privileges, straight passing privileges. And that's not even getting into race and, and right. Oh and yeah, like for that. sure. There's just like a whole host of shit, but I would assume for like sure. in the South. Yeah. Like if, if you're a white and straight passing, you're at the top of the food chain more so than, than other areas. But yes. For sure. um, would you touch a lot on like that in your videos, which I, I love cause you do it in a way that like is like funny and shit like that. But yeah, so you're also um, a psych nurse, which is really interesting. And do you always work night shifts? Or is it just kind of on a rotating schedule? No, I've never worked a day shift before. Time and a half. Is that time and a half? I mean. Yeah, I, I don't quite know the, the whole shift temperature, but. 
I only knew it be like I had um, my sister had friends who were well they were SCNAs but they would get okay. time and a half if they worked nights so I didn't know if like psych nurses also got like time and a half working nights but I should um, I should know more, a lot more about my pay than I actually do gotcha I'm just kind of like <laughs> money yay <laughs> yay I have money monies I feel like if you worked a day shift and you saw it you'd be like fuck this shit yeah oh my <laughs> then god you'd see it and you'd be like oh shit uh, I'm like I have to suffer more for less of this but yeah that's that's actually um really neat i i did some research i was a psych major and i was Ooh. like going to get my doctorate um or okay. i was on track to get my doctorate i was going to be in clinical uh, clinical child psychologist and mm -hmm. so children's has you know children's hospital has a really good cincinnati facility and so i started doing research for the psychiatric facility on college hill and okay. i would re research like psychiatric nurse burnout and all of this shit like little tiny variables of you know like because the re the retention rate is like so crazy and like the turnover so mm -hmm. crazy like what have you yeah. seen in terms of like being a like because you're pretty new i feel like you're like you've been there for mm -hmm. a year, a year i've two. been there for a little over a year yeah with i i guess i mean i felt like i've gotten burnt out already not fully but like definitely to the point where i, I definitely like i need a break which i which i have coming up but yeah, I think it's just a matter of working in a psych hospital can be kind of hectic sometimes because patient behaviors are very, very unpredictable. Mm -hmm. And if you have a high turnover at your hospital, um, you're going into work every day, like more and more not knowing what to expect when you go in there. So yeah. it can be, it can be kind of like, you, it gets you nervous before, before work sometimes because you, you have no idea what's going to happen. Yeah. I feel like in a lot of other specialties, you don't know what's going to happen necessarily, but there's, I feel like there's a lot more structure. So it's easy for that fear of going in occasionally to, as it builds up, it can, it can kind of get you burnt out a little bit. So. Yeah. I mean, I saw it from like a purely like research perspective. There was like correlations between like using like protective equipment and, and the certain like escalations and shit like that. I was like looking at like all of that shit yeah. for like research and we went to College Hill and did all that stuff. But I had already like seen like a psychiatric, psychiatric facility because I was a guest yeah. there for, mm -hmm. for a person that I was like um, visiting there. And I felt the same way like when I went in there, like just a little uneasy. Yeah. Anything, anything, you never know what's going to, anything. Yeah. Go, like, and, and that could easily also be due to like stigma, especially in like horror movies and everything can make people feel very strange about going into a yeah. psych hospital. They're really not what they're portrayed to be, but yeah. nevertheless, things do happen and uh, it can be a, a scary environment. Um, yeah. Depending on the dynamic of the patient load and everything. I agree. I mean, people think it, 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 it's one way because the media portrays it in a certain way. And like, mm -hmm. I didn't realize like when I, I was uncomfortable just because it was like a new experience and I was just, like, yeah. cause I was, and I was visiting someone, I had some, some other stuff, but like a lot of, there were a lot of homeless people in there because they would mm -hmm. get a 72 hour hold and they would get like a bed and like food and stuff like that, which didn't occur to yeah. me. It's actually very resourceful. Yeah. You're like, oh, like I act crazy. I like, kind of be a menace and then I get a bed for 72 hours. Like, that's fucking nice. Yeah. Like, I'd fucking do that. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. What made you go into it? Like, did you always know when you were going to be a nurse that you were going to be a psych nurse? Or did you make that decision yes. later? Yeah. Before I even thought about nursing, I wanted to go into psychology. Um, so when I was like a junior in high school, I was like, I want to go to college for psychology. And my parents told me that that's not a good idea because I'm going to have to go through more school before yeah. I can actually get a decent paying job, which I know plenty of people who have decent paying jobs with just a, a degree in psychology. But, um, mm -hmm. so, but at the same time, my parents were not willing to let me do that. So they wanted me to be able to get a job right out of college. So I decided that nursing would be the, the route that I go in. So I went into nursing instead and focused on psych because I know that I, I knew that I could still get that one-on-one -on -one interaction with patients yes. that I wanted originally yes. uh, if I had gone into psychology. Yeah. I mean, I knew that from the jump when I like was a psych major, they basically were like, if you want to do anything, you need to get like a master's degree and, and all of that shit. And like, I was totally fine with it because I loved academia. I'm like, fuck yeah. Like, yeah. I don't have to go to the workforce, like more school. Great. And then I don't have to like actually have like a, that kind of corporate job. I can just, you know, like get my doctorate and practice and do research and then become a teacher. Like that sounds great. Yeah. It wasn't in theory. I mean, I didn't want to do that long term. Like, and that was like my senior year in college. And I'm like, ah. after I did all of this shit and like had to do all this stuff at children's, like break my back. Oh my God. And then I was like, nah. 
I'm going to do something else. But I get it with the one-on-one. Like there's a reason why I didn't like what I, some of the stuff that I was doing at Children's is because I was doing so, so, so research-based stuff. I wasn't doing the, I getting the one-on-one attention with kids that I wanted. Right. And I worked for the Center for ADHD there. And Ooh. yeah, that was really fun. And they did like a behavior modification program for kids who have ADHD on, you know, just like very intense and other come over disorders and stuff like that. And it was yeah. so great to work with kids one on one, you know, outside, like just doing that kind of stuff. And I mean, it might be something that I might go back to and yeah. doing that, but like doing that research was just like soul sucking. Like, I feel like just, I hate ugh. research. I hate research. Yeah. I know it's necessary, but I hate doing it. Yeah. It was just not a good experience. <laughs> it just, I didn't have a good experience with it. And then I, you know, I was seeing these uh, Facebook ads of people traveling the world and working from home. And I was like, it, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> let's try that. Um, let's let's do just go that. off the rails. <laughs> yes. But yeah. So like when I saw that stuff, I was like, holy shit. Like that's the shit that I was kind of in, but in like a different angle. But no, that's super cool that you like you had wanted to be be a psych nurse because uh, that shit's nuts. I've seen it yeah. on paper. I've seen it in person. Like that's super commendable. Um, Thank you to, to do that stuff. What's it been like like with your own mental health? Because I know you made a lot of videos, which I think are really funny, and I feel like it's interesting <laughs> because I feel like mental health is so common. A lot of people have it, but you're like actively like also like dealing with it and then also dealing with other people on a larger scale, like at work. Yeah. Like how, how do you feel with that? Cause I feel like if I was feeling some type of way and like my patient was feeling some type of way, I'd be like, <laughs> I fucking understand it, but you got to take your meds. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, no, yeah. no, no, I know, I know, but I know. But like, right. <laughs> yeah. No, it honestly helps my mental health because yeah. it helps because it gives me some kind of, it, it allows me to empathize with them um, a lot more than people who don't struggle with mental illness. Mm-hmm. And in doing that, I'm able to provide better care to the patients, which means that I've somehow found a purpose in my own yeah. suffering, which is something that I, that I do love about my job. And I'm, I'm able to, I'm, I feel like I'm easily able to at least to separate the negative, the really negative aspects of my mental illnesses to allow that kind of care. Yeah. To be able to like really empathize with people, like you have to be able to, you know, seen the depths. If you're in the darkness, you can appreciate the light more. Right. Um, right. Exactly. Which is super awesome. I feel like a lot of people Thank don't you. realize that there's so much purpose in, in suffering, you know what I mean? And like, you can find mm-hmm. a lot of purpose in that. Like I wouldn't have been able to create this podcast if I hadn't gone through a sig- like, you know, significant ordeals, you know, like I, if I was always straight, I wouldn't have this podcast and be talking to this people. If I had a very easy coming out process, you know, I wouldn't have right. been on TikTok and created this shit. Like, I feel like pain does create shit. Like it does. Know, yeah. So. I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't be a nurse if I didn't struggle already, you know? Yeah. Like it definitely feels like gives you purpose. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that's why you have so many people who are like in comedy and are, or not even just in comedy, but just like helping people in general because they mm-hmm. understand and they empathize. Like you, you hear so many comedians and people are like baffled, like, oh my God, like these comedians are of depression or I had no idea Robin Williams is yeah. so depressed. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, where the, the fuck do you think they got to be so funny? The, f- the funniest people are depressed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> They're trying to make themselves laugh. It's not about you. <laughs> <laughs> I've never thought of it that way before. That's funny. Honest to God, a lot of the times I'll make TikToks and I just make them for myself. Like, <laughs> and I'll watch them a bunch and I'm like, this is funny. I like this. Maybe I'll post oh it. Oh my God. I know. I make them for myself too. People are like, give us this kind of content. And I'm like, what if I didn't? What if I did what I wanted? Yeah. Oh yeah. You had a video or it was something when you were talking about the comment when people are like, did I ask? Or like, I never yeah. asked for this. I've made like two videos on that. It, <laughs> boils my blood it's just so fucking funny like it's just like did i ask it's like uh you asked to have like shit on your for you page you fuck face get off of get off the app if you don't like it unfollow you know tiktok has an algorithm hit uninterested you know what i mean truly it's It's so easy i don't get that kind of hate on tiktok but i post my tiktoks to my reels and instagram is a lot different than tiktok i felt like are they nicer Oh, Instagram's worse. 
Instagram's worse. In my experience, oh, no. TikTok has been pretty nice, but like my straight TikTok videos, like my videos that have gone really viral and gotten a straight TikTok, those are the ones that are absolutely horrendous. And people are like yes. fighting with each other in the comments, which is kind of fun. I'm like, yeah, you go, like you go, Fight gay over me. girl, 1097, like, yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah. And I'll just like watch it oh from the sideline, yes. like just eating it up. Um, but yeah, I started posting on Reels. And that shit was way worse. And I was posting the same videos. Oh, my God. And, I mean, so much shit. And it was literally, like, it kind of sucked, too, because it was, like, not even things of, like, my uh, my looks or my appearance, per se. It was – and it was the shit – because, like, that shit never really, like, would affect me. And it's, like, right. somehow they know that. Like, they're like, no, nah, we're not going to say she's ugly. She knows she's not ugly. We're going to say that she's talentless. <laughs> We're going to dig deep. <laughs> We're going to say she has oh my talent. God. We're going to say that being a lesbian is the only personality trait she has. And oh, I'm like, bro, oh, how did you know that was going to hurt me? How did you know? <laughs> oh my God, my heart. Yeah. People on Reddit are awful too. People on Reddit are horrible. Yeah. They'll comment about appearance. Yeah. That shit's the, crazy. They don't care. I will say, like, I, I thought that there would be some things. Like, I thought you were going to call me, like, a 12 year old no one's ever no one's been doing that that's something that i thought was gonna happen i was gonna have to deal with that um, how often do you get called a 12 year old well just like that i look younger than i am i thought someone's gonna make a witty comment i was a little disappointed i was a little yeah, disappointed I, in that i get it i get a good bit of those that say you could tell me you're 15 or 30 and i would believe you <laughs> i get so many of those <laughs> i'm not laughing because i think that it's true i'm laughing because no. I, I feel your pain yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm 23. <laughs> yeah. You're like right, right in the middle. Yeah, um, but no, yeah, Instagram's rough. I almost like, because I, you know, you can't turn off like the notifications for those. So they would constantly, I would constantly right. see them in the comments. And like, that was what was like hurting me. Not the fact that it was actually happening. Because with TikTok, I don't know, like, I just would never see them unless I went to my actual comments drop down. Right. And I never did that because I just like don't want to, you know, have a bad day all the time. But like yeah, yeah, with, with, with Instagram, it was inevitable and I'm always on it. And I'm like, fuck, I'm like just dirtying my waters here by people who are just constantly, and even not even that stuff, but like not taking jokes like about just like queer stereotypes and stuff like that. If you do it in a tasteful yeah. way, it's funny. But them being like, you're portraying negative stereotypes. And I'm like, but I'm not, that's not what I'm trying to do. Like, but I'm kind of insecure yeah. about like, maybe that I am, maybe you're right. Yeah. And like, <laughs> and all that shit, it looked really hit. It really hit for me. Now I'm over it. And like, and I, and I still post to reels and stuff. And I'm just, I, you know, I get called talentless and I'm like, okay, that's fine. You're like, all right. yeah, you're, that's you're fine. only famous, not famous. I'm not famous, but they're like, you only have followers because you're a lesbian. <laughs> And oh, I'm like, no. partly true though. Yeah. Well, that's fine. I'm okay that's all I it. want. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, my it male works. count's going down, my female count's going up and uh, I'm okay with I need, that. Ooh, I, for, I need, ooh, I need, I haven't checked that in a while. I'm going to check that yeah. later. So if you ever think about posting to Reels, just beware. I think that they'll do really well, but be, be okay. aware. It's oh, a different I, I will. crowd. It's a different crowd. It's a YouTube all right, I'm ready. crowd. Like, I'm ready to thicken my skin even more. You got to thicken your skin. <laughs> no, I'm like, we, we, do, we really derailed there. Um, yeah, we really. <laughs> <laughs> I love derailing, though. It's fun. Me too. <clears throat> it's super fun. Oh, just like, it's like a funny side note. Like, you with the burping, like, that shit is so funny. Uh, thank you. I, I got, I've gotten multiple comments saying, is, is this all she's going to do? <laughs> <laughs> they're like we're tired of this and i was like yeah, i understand that you're she tired can't of even this. burp that long <laughs> fuck her <laughs> she can't even burp more than three words this is ridiculous no yeah going- i've got I, but I've, I've definitely gotten comments that are like this isn't funny anymore and i'm like yeah you're right i'm not gonna do it again i think it's still funny i think the first one i saw you were doing something in the mirror and you were like swinging one arm and then you like burped at the end that was like the oh first my God, the one chicken of the first tinder videos video this. That was my chicken Tinder video. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. I don't know if that was like a long time ago. I just, I got on TikTok in April, but that it was feels like a long time I ago. You. I legit like followed oh you. Oh my God. Spot. I was like, pink. That's a good one. I love that. But no, that one was funny. And like you burped at the end. I was like, that's funny. Cause like I, I burp all the time. And like, I, you know, you grow up in a household and everyone says burping is unladylike. And like, yeah, me, you know? excuse me. Yeah. You know, no, burping's fun. Burping's fun. Burping's cathartic. 
it helps you. Why would you keep it in? And that's what pisses me exactly. off. You know, it's like at the dinner table. And I was like, is there anywhere else I'm supposed to do it? And so, so yeah. excuse me, I need to go to the restroom and go, yeah, <laughs> the fucking you, restroom. Just, be, just hearing that echo <laughs> in the, in the, the giant ass bathroom. Everyone can hear it. It's like right yeah. next to the table. So and everyone yeah. just keeps eating, pretends like it didn't happen. You just walk back and that's right. what you're supposed to do. Just come back. It's just, it's the smell that bothers them. You can have smellless burps though. Burps that don't smell. Yeah. I have like, burps that don't smell all the time. Yeah. Natural gas burps. You know what I mean? They yeah. haven't put in Which, the uh, egg smell. Right. Exactly. <laughs> no problem with it. I know my mom used to like, get mad, but now I specifically do it. I do it on purpose. I burp Good. completely on purpose and I blow As it in you their should. <laughs> As you should. As you should. Because I'm like, Ooh, I don't... you could have just n- not said anything and I would have been perfectly fine. But now that yeah. you said something, I'm going to make sure. I'm going to make yeah, sure I, I do it specifically. I've never, I've never done the blow it in your face part. I should try that. <laughs> like where you burp and you go, Whoosh. yeah. Yeah, like when you like vape your burps like that. Mm, yep. It's a good one. <laughs> it's, it's really fun to see the looks of disgust. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Oh my god! At first, I used no. to get mad about that. Like I would get hurt. I'm like, I'm not a disgusting person when, just for burping. But now I specifically do it to be disgusting, and I'm like, ha ha. Yeah, ha <laughs> ha. I'd be hurt if lady. you didn't have that response. I am lady. Hear me roar. <laughs> I am lady. That sounded <laughs> like uh, that sounded Russian. <laughs> I yeah, I like to do a Russian accent. <laughs> I was like, did I hear that right? And I tried to. I was like, I can't do a Russian accent. I'm not gonna try. I'm trying. <laughs> It's a difficult accent that I butcher. That works. Not bad. Not bad. Like red from Orange is the New Black. I, you know, I never got into Orange is the New Black. I watched like the first two or three episodes, like my freshman year of college, and I just couldn't get into it. Oh, I got into it. I feel so awful about it. Yeah, I'm I'm glad that you did. I was too into it. I was I was closeted at the time. Actually, I wasn't out to myself. Oh no! I didn't even know I was in the closet. That's the worst part. You know, you don't know when you're in the closet. I was in the closet. Oh my god! And I was so obsessed with Orange Is the New Black, like obsessed. Like no one else. The closet is the new black. I was like, this is the shit. And everyone's like, yeah, it's like cool. It's like all right. And I'm like, but no, like this. No, this is wonderful. This is like monumental. No one thought it was monumental but me. <laughs> I should have known. It. I should have known. <laughs> should have known. Should have known. Like you don't think a bunch of female convicts that fuck each other is monumental? Yeah, <laughs> this is revolutionary. Yeah. Talk about women's health issues and they're it's intersectional yeah. and yes, empowering. And women? Yeah. Have and you seen women? the women? Have you seen? Have you seen them? <laughs> have you seen the sex scenes? Have you seen them? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow. Truly. Um, wow. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, we'll go to the questions with the queers. This is uh, Hannah. They're 25 and they write, hello, you lovely people. I fairly recently figured out that I'm not straight. It was the major revelation I had during quarantine or queer in time. I'm slowly mm. coming out to my friends and siblings, but I'm not ready to tell my mom or dad yet. I grew up in a very conservative Christian household, much like a lot of us later in life queer people. I know my stepdad will be accepting, but my mom I said a few times throughout my life that, quote, bi people don't exist. You're either gay or straight. Bi people are just lying to themselves, unquote. My dad is super Mm. homophobic, so I'm okay with not coming out to him for a while, but my mom and I are really close. Would it be better to wait and come out to my mom until I have a girlfriend slash non-binary partner, or should I just rip the Band-Aid off? Love the podcast. Thank you for making it a safe space for the community. Oh, I know that in my experience, there was definitely the, you've never been with a girl, how do you know that you like girls kind of thing, which is, which is stupid, yeah. uh, considering we impose heterosexuality on, like, to literal toddlers. So yeah, that was definitely a question, at least when I was coming out. Um, but I don't regret waiting until I got with a partner to come out to them. Yeah, so I would say to Hannah and to the listeners, I had a similar experience. I mean, I'm 26. I've been out for a few years. I started coming out after college, and I slowly came out as well. Like, and I I was one of those people that I wanted to come out to everyone before I started dating. That's not how everyone does it. Some people start dating and then come out. Like, it's just, it's really, there's no one set way to do things. But for me, I felt like I needed to, like, build the confidence and start with people that I knew, like my one best friend that I grew up with that is, came out as a lesbian, I mean, years before I did. And I literally grew up with her. Like we were like the same person until I started dressing feminine. And she was like, what the fuck are you doing? And 
now I understand that now I'm back to like not trusting feminine, but, um, and it was very easy. But even then I was, I was literally thousands of miles away. I was in a different country, living in a different country. And I was still nervous to tell her. And she was like, okay. <laughs> she was just like, okay. Aww. Uh, very nonchalant, which at first I was like, what? You're not happy? Like what? And she was Make like, a big deal. I was like, why aren't you making a big deal of this? This is huge. Why don't you care about me? She was just like, honestly, I'm not surprised. She's like, you're an open person. It's not like I like thought you were gay, but it's not like I thought you were like straight. Like she just didn't really, like she didn't have any expectations, which I thought was really cool and stuff like that. And then I started telling my close friends when I came home and I, then I came out to my sister. So it was like a big process of like building up that confidence. I didn't have mm-hmm. it. I didn't have that self-esteem and the self-assuredness, you know? And I think a lot of people yeah. get caught up with like needing a, a um, girlfriend or like showing that you, that you are this so that people will believe you. Um, yeah. Not just in that, but just in anything. You know what I mean? Like showing that you have mental health issues so people will believe you. Like needing something tangible to make you feel valid. Yeah. And it's, it's hard to get out of that. And it, it takes a lot of like co- self-confidence and like knowing yourself and, and just shedding the idea that you have to give a shit about other people. Um, which is really hard. Cause when you're like coming out to your friends and family, you love them, you want them to accept you and you want that validation and to be seen and heard as your authentic self. And sometimes they're not ready to see that because they have their own preconceived notions of you. And they, you know, like, I feel like with parents, like they feel like, they know you. They've known you since you were like a, a child, a little baby. They knew every little nook and cranny of you and your personality and they watched you grow. And they, for some reason, can't fathom the idea. Like they had their own um, ideas of what you were going to look like and you, what you were going to do and marry and like all of that. Like they had those dreams and hopes for you too, whether or not they impose them on you, but like it's changing their reality too. And it's going to take them a little bit to process, yeah. which is something that I didn't think about. Like you've known this for so long and they are just figuring it out then and like having big expectations on them coming out and them like knowing exactly or knowing it or like having a great reaction is a lot to put on parents especially if they come from conservative christian upbringings and it doesn't always end well people don't always people have their own trauma your parents have their own trauma and they have their own shit and it doesn't always work the way you think it's going to work. And what I would say is like, if you're, if you're really close to your mom, I would, I wouldn't say from my experience, like, it seems like we're on the same page with that, but like, it did give me the confidence to like slowly come out and it seems like that's what you're doing. And I feel like once you get to a spot where you feel comfortable, like coming out to your mom, who you seem like you really want to, and you're close to, you know, maybe, and, and I'm not saying you have to do this, but like, I kind of started sprinkling in things. Like when I realized that I was gay and this was like in college, I started talking about it. I started sprinkling it in. I started talking about my friend who would come out as a lesbian. I just started sprinkling things in over the years to kind of gauge, um, (laughs) and just, just slowly educate. So when it came time for me to, I felt like maybe I've, I put in enough work and stuff like that. So yeah. I, yeah. I feel like, I feel like it's important to have a support system of people who do validate you behind you so that to kind of prepare you. So to help, to help you to validate yourself in the face of somebody who may not validate you yeah. at first. And that might not, not always be in, you know, in your physical life. It, it might be online. There's so many people yeah, for out sure. here ready to hear you, see you, validate you. We're all here to do that. Yeah. But I, I would say like, you know, biphobia is still something that's super prevalent, you know, like it's, it's been portrayed in in a bunch of different things and it's been portrayed in the community itself with lesbians who are like, Oh, pick a tea or all that stuff. For sure. You know, and it's still not as much, but it, it did used to happen, which baffles me because it's like, with just people in the community who like aren't okay with other people in the community is like Mm -hmm. very hypocritical. But I think just with time, like once you tell her, like, it, with time, it'll help, you know, it will, but it, it, it might be uncomfortable. It might be something that be, that would be hard to do. But I think if you guys are close, I think you'll be okay. You know, whatever happens, but yeah, it, I think you just got to do it when you're ready, when you feel it in your gut that you're ready to, ready to do it. For sure. Yeah. Can't always be planned. Sometimes it's unplanned and you're just like, Oh, this is the day. This is the time we're going to do yep. it. Yep. All right, so this is the lightning round, and so are you ready to answer some questions really fast, Kelsey? I'm ready. Yay, okay. Haley Kiyoko or Girl in Red? Uh, Girl in Red. Ooh, Janelle Monae or Tegan and Sarah? 
Janelle Monae. Um, beanies or snapbacks? Beanies. Jean jackets or flannels? Flannels. Giving presents or getting presents? Giving presents. Are you the gay that squishes the bugs? Yes. Yes, probably. Um, <laughs> favorite queer movie of all time? Oh, God. Um, there's a, okay, so there's a, there's a movie called Kiss Me on, that was on Netflix that I really like. It's not English. Oh, cool. And then last question, um, last song you listened to on repeat? <laughs> Here Comes Goodbye by Rascal Flatts. Nice. <laughs> cool, cool. Cool. Country. That's country. I know. I started out liking Rascal Flats ironically, and then I actually got into them. <laughs> Don't you hate that? You're like, haha, I'm listening to this ironically. Like, this. yeah, haha. <laughs> and then I was like, oh shit, life really is a highway. They're so right. Oh my God, that, that's what hurts. The and most. I want to ride it all night long. <laughs> all night long. <laughs> Oh, God. Well, thank you so much for being on this podcast, Kelsey. Um, if you yeah. want to check out more about Kelsey, you can find her at Queeshy C. And as always, you can find me on all platforms at Brie Logan. That's it for this episode, my queers. Thank you for listening and subscribing. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Give us a follow on Spotify. Be you, be queer, stay safe. We'll see you on the next episode.